I'm Sean from St John's Gould and today is the last of our series of talks on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount from Matthew's Gospel. Uh, if you haven't seen the others, they're available on our YouTube channel. Jesus' Sermon started out with blessings on unexpected people, the poor in spirit, the ones who mourn. Then came a call for people to be different and make a difference in the world, to love and pray for our enemies. He gave us the Lord's Prayer as a model for how to pray, encouraged people to trust God for what we need, and so on. And then Jesus draws the sermon to a close with these words in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were amazed at his, at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. Two things stand out for me in that passage. Jesus is, now you've heard it, do it. And that the crowd, not the people already following Jesus, he was pitching his sermon at, but the curious ones who'd come along as well to check him out, were amazed by the authority they saw in him. It's worth starting by being clear of the three things Jesus didn't say. He didn't say, if you don't put my words into practice, there will be storms and you'll suffer for it. The storms of life will come either way. In fact, following Jesus can mean things are harder rather than easier. The difference isn't in the size of our problems, it's in the help there to face them. He didn't say, if you work hard putting my words into practice, you will earn my protection. God loves us anyway. And us not keeping at arm's length just lets him in to do what he wanted to do in the first place for everyone. And finally, he didn't say, if you put my words into practice 100% perfectly from day one, any more than we'd expect a five-year-old at primary school to be ready to sit a degree exam. He expects us to start imperfectly and get a little less imperfect step by step. But if we start, he's there straight away to cover the gap between what we should be like and what we're actually managing. A bit like a parent holding their baby's arms when they first start learning to walk so they don't fall down. But given all that, there's no escaping the fact that following Jesus and finding our home with God means not just nodding our head and saying, that sounds great. Think about the crowd. As I said, they turned about of curiosity about this new teacher on the scene, maybe with no more commitment than someone might watch a new TV programme they'd heard lots of people talking about. By the time Jesus finished speaking, they were amazed by his authority. Not just what he'd said, but something about the way he'd said it that put him in a different league to anyone they'd heard before. This is not just like a slick politician telling people what they want to hear. The whole sermon was challenging. But they had cause to take seriously that challenge to go and act. I'm not saying all, all of them did respond. We can all be very good at finding reasons to duck out of anything difficult if we want to. But they knew there was something special about this. So how do we build on the rock? Well, first, pick the real rock. Last week I read a new story about Sheffield University having a big new building under construction. And back in May, the contractors came to them and said there was a problem with the foundations. There was more settlement than they expected, and that they'd have to take down half of what they'd already built. Then last week, that changed to a decision to take down everything they'd built and start again with new foundations. Sometimes people have a similar problem spiritually. They start with something that seems okay, but it's not as solid as they think. 
maybe they misremembered something from the Bible or didn't know its context so they misunderstood it or someone explained something to them badly and they sincerely acted on what was a false foundation and things fell apart. The truth is God wants us to understand but it doesn't all come in one big download straight into our brains. It takes time. The more of the Bible we know the better we can understand what we already knew and it's worth putting the effort into that. Next month we'll be starting some teaching on understanding the Bible. Think about signing up for it. And sometimes it pays to talk to someone more, exp more experienced to get their angle. Christianity is a team game. Most importantly, talk to the team captain. Pray. For any significant decision, a Christian's responsibility isn't to decide what they should do. It's to discern what God has already decided. A lot of the time that fits with what we'd like to do because God builds our vocations into us. The practical abilities and spiritual gifts you have are there precisely to fit you into your spot in God's big plan. But sometimes our callings come with an element of sacrifice. I remember long ago a priest saying, when she was coming to the end of her curacy, she said, God, send me anywhere except, and the except was exactly where she ended up. Though it did work out okay. There can be times we're called to go somewhere we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves, or to let go of something we do like, to concentrate on something else. The thing to remember is that the God who calls us to follow and serve him loves us, and loves everyone else as well. He's not out to get us, but building on the rock means going for what's best for everyone. I'll end with a real world metaphor. This is a very flat part of the country, but hundreds of years ago when people first built churches in Fish Lake and Snake, they built them on the highest ground around. It wasn't exactly high, just a few feet above the surroundings, but solid ground. That meant last autumn in Fish Lake and this spring in Snaith, when the floods came, those buildings on the highest ground were safe. And because of that, they were able to be the centre of help for everyone around them. That fact about those church buildings points to the call of the church itself. We build on the rock of Jesus' words even if in practice we're just a bit higher than the people around us and still far from perfect. And we do that not just to be safe ourselves, but to help other people to that same place of safety and peace with God. The heart of the Christian call is always to reach out to others too, for their sake.